I'm really excited that I love this so much. This is so good. This is so good. Bless you, avocados. You truly are a gift. Whoa, shit. Oh my God. Hi, I'm Beryl. And this week I'm wearing green in honor of the theme of the episode. Avocados! It's avocados. <laughs> if you've seen any of my other videos, this next statement might not come as a shock. However, I'm gonna put it out there because I know that not all of you have seen them. There will not be guacamole in this episode and there will not be avocado toast in this episode. While both of those are amazing avocado dishes, I wanted to find things that you might not know about. And if you do know about some of these, you probably don't know about all of them. So that being said, I have five avocado recipes from five different countries that I think will be very delicious. So with that, let's begin. I'm starting with an avocado dish from Eswatini. You may know this country also as Swaziland. This is just a simple salad. In Swati, the word for salad is sly, so that's what we're gonna call this dish. Since it's simple enough, I thought we should talk a little bit about the country. For starters, where it is. Eswatini is one of the smallest countries in Africa, and it's located in the south of the continent. I'm actually gonna show you on a map. It's just here, between South Africa and Mozambique on the eastern coast, but as you can see, it's landlocked. Back to cooking. The capital is Mbabane, with around 95,000 residents. And the cuisine in Eswatini is generally grain and vegetable based. So the ingredients in this salad represent a lot of the common plants in the country. Avocados being one of them, as well as ginger and peanuts. Okay, so this is called sly. There are a lot of different iterations of this dish. This is a popular version of it though. So pretty basic. Um, I think it's gonna be delicious. Mmm, it is so fresh tasting. Like it's a burst of sunshine in your mouth. <laughs> Yum. I actually think that the nutty flavor lends itself really nicely to the avocado. Like this as a side dish just kind of lightens everything, but then the peanuts give it a little bit more depth because the ginger and lemon juice are so acidic. Honestly, this is like a really, really well-balanced salad. Yum. You have to marinate this for 20 minutes with the salt, lemon juice, and ginger. And I think that that time is really important and not something that you should skip because it really does get into the avocado rather than just being a coating on top of it. It is just like smile inducing. You can't help it. <laughs> Next up, we're shifting to a Filipino dessert. It's only two ingredients, avocados and condensed milk. In many countries in Asia, and I'm actually sure beyond that, avocados are used in desserts, which is a large departure from how the Western world looks at avocados. They are mostly just savory. So I was very intrigued to try this. Often people add ice to the dish, but I actually didn't have any ice, so I refrigerated it and voila. This is something that I have actually wanted to try for a while now, and it's two ingredients. So how could I not include it, you know? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Honestly, put condensed milk on anything and I'll tell you it tastes amazing. <laughs> but I totally get this. I totally get how avocado is a dessert. Oh my God, this is so good. It tastes like pudding. Like this tastes like the creamiest, like freshest pudding you've ever had. I can't really believe that in the US avocados are only savory. We are missing out on so much. Wow, 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 wow. I ate all that in like one second. I obviously didn't put enough in my bowl. 17 out of 10, I highly recommend. <laughs> This is an avocado soup from Colombia. Now, this is more of a regional dish and not something commonly found across the entire country. In fact, it comes from a small town called Tumaco, and this is a port city on the Pacific Ocean right next to the Ecuadorian border. 
Avocado production in Colombia has actually been ramping up over the years as the climate is really well suited for this fruit. And online, I read that they are aiming to be the second largest avocado producer in South America after Mexico. This soup can be served hot or cold. Okay, I hold the bottom. Can you do the top? I went with hot because I've never heard of or tried a cooked avocado, and in this recipe you boil it, so I thought that that could be interesting. If I'm being totally honest, green soup kind of gives me Dr. Seuss green eggs and ham vibes, but it smells really good, so there it is. Okay, so this is a Colombian avocado cream soup. And um, I have never eaten cooked avocado, I don't think. So this is a first. Mm. Interesting. The more I eat it, the more I like it actually. <laughs> it is very savory. And oftentimes I think about avocado as kind of a sweeter tasting flavor but this is a very savory soup through and through. The color halfway through cooking it was kind of eh, but the final product looked really beautiful. I think that avocado is interesting because I don't think that it has a super strong flavor to it. So putting it here with the heavy cream and the chicken stock, the cumin, it does for me lose a little bit of that avocado-ness. However, I still think that the avocado adds an element of creaminess and thickness to the soup that makes it like, very comforting and nice. I'm learning something new every time I do these videos. It is so exhilarating. <laughs> Next, this is a stuffed avocado dish from Guinea Bissau. In this dish, the avocado is mashed up with tuna and then it is served in the skin of the hollowed out fruit. And this is something that also exists in other countries, but I really liked the preparation of this dish. Guinea-Bissau is a small country in Western Africa. I'm actually gonna pull the map back up. You can see here, it's on the Atlantic coast bordering Senegal and Guinea. Like many African countries, Guinea-Bissau was colonized in the 1400s by the Portuguese, and it wasn't until 1974 that they regained their independence. Seafood is a staple of the cuisine as it is a sea bordering country. And in this recipe, I'm using heavy cream whipped, but I did see other recipes using evaporated milk instead. This is quite a common appetizer in the country and it comes together quite quickly. And honestly, it looks really nice. Okay, so this dish is from Guinea-Bissau, a small country in Western Africa. And in essence, it's tuna stuffed avocado. Oh my gosh, this is so good. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, but like, when I was putting the heavy whipping cream in there, I thought, what's, what are we doing? What is this? What's happening? <laughs> Wait. Oh my goodness. The tuna fish and the avocado go really well together. I don't think that that's quite a surprise. For me, the left field elements were the grated coconut, the spicy tomato sauce, and the heavy whipping cream. And I'm not gonna tell you why all of them actually work like a perfect symphony. Okay. So the whipped cream, I believe, is acting like a mayonnaise, except that there isn't that kind of heaviness that mayonnaise can lend to a tuna salad. So what you're getting from it is this very kind of like creamy tuna salad without that heavy back end feeling. And then the spicy tomato sauce injects this element of savory that is very surprising. It kind of like hits you in the back of the tongue. I really don't know much about Guinea-Bissau as a country, so I love that I can try something from their cuisine over there and I learned a lot about the country in doing this. I would have added more hot sauce. Made this a little spicier when I do it again because I'm definitely making this again. Oh my God. That was so good. That was so good. 
very happy. <laughs> Finally, we are ending this episode with a smoothie. And I actually had this smoothie when I was staying with my sister in Damascus, Syria. And you know, avocados and smoothies, I know is not just a Syrian thing. You can find this everywhere, but this drink stuck with me because it was the first time I had ever had an avocado and a drink. While alcohol is not banned in Syria, the majority of people are not heavy drinkers. So fruit smoothies and fruit drinks like this are very, very popular. The shop that this actually comes from had the most amazing presentations. The shop is called Abu Shaker and it's actually still open today. I'm just gonna put in a couple of photos. Look at these drinks, they're amazing, right? Anyway, so it is simple, but it is so refreshing and light and very easy to make if you wanna shake up your fruit drinks once in a while. My final avocado dish is a smoothie. And before you're like, oh yeah, an avocado smoothie. This has a personal story and it was delicious. So I included it. Mm -hmm. Man, that is so good. Avocado and banana just go so well together. Just like with the soup, I don't think that the flavor of the avocado in a smoothie like this is gonna be overpowering, but I think that what it does is make it just thick and creamy and delicious. And so adding it allows the other flavors of whatever else you're blending it with to really stand up, but it kind of adds depth. So I don't think that this tastes like an avocado, but it tastes like, well, it tastes like everything else in there. It's just really good. It's nice when you have memories associated with a dish, you know? So like for this, even though it's just a smoothie, it makes me happy because I'm remembering all these amazing things I did. And that wraps up the avocado episode. I hope that you guys liked the video and that you learned a little bit more about this fruit and what it's capable of, that it's more than just guacamole and avocado toast. Although those are two really delicious things, so. Uh, yeah, okay. See you guys in my next video. <laughs>